Hello everyone, I welcome you all. My name is Phyllis Chakur Philip, and I am today with Mariana Fenton, who was the co-creator of the exhibition, Don't Ask Me Where I Am From, and it's currently on view at the Aga Khan Museum. The topic of our conversation today is all about one single flower, namely the tulip, which was offered so many interesting conversation between the two of us in the past. One of the reasons to select this topic for today's conversation is, as you all know, the celebration around the tulip during the month of May. We thought it, it would be a good idea to talk about this elegant flower to uplift our mood and create joyful anticipation for this time of the year. Marianne, I know you have a special interest on tulip. Would you like to add something onto that? Yes, firstly, thank you so much for inviting me to join you. Um, we've had wonderful conversations, as you said, and it's so exciting to be able to share some of this uh, with a larger audience and, and to learn more from you because I know that you're very, very knowledgeable. Um, so I, without further ado, I'm going to share our PowerPoint um, so that we can look at some of the beautiful images that you have included in this. Right, so Phyllis, um, I've become a little obsessive about gardening and I'm particularly interested in where plants come from. The tulip has become very strongly associated with being a Dutch plant, but I know from our many conversations and from some research that I've done myself, it has a tantalizing secret history. Tell me, where is it actually from? <laughs> yes, uh, the, indeed, tulip has a fascinating story in different cultures and countries. It's uh, originally a wild flower from the steppe of Central Asia. The earliest depiction of tulips as part of the repertoire of artisans and artists uh, we discover in the medieval period uh, during the Seljuk Empire, which stretched uh, from Anatolia and the Levant in the west to the Hindu Kush in the east and uh, from the northern part of Central Asia to the Persian Gulf in the south. So as you can imagine, a vast territory in the global landscape. I, I have chosen uh, one specific image I would like to share with you in this context, uh, an uh, image of uh, a mihrab uh, from Konya in Turkey, which was uh, the co capital of the Seljuks. This mihrab from Behekim Mosque uh, is one of the most impressive examples found in, in Anatolian architecture of the Seljuks and was constructed during the, during the 13th century. I show this just to point out how early the tulip uh, appears in an abstract form in arts of Anatolia. Then uh, if we move further in the history of tulip uh, in 14th century, it was uh, incredibly important for the race of Ottomans and who eventually conquered the city of Constantinople in 1453 and uh, led by uh, Sultan Mehmed II. Uh, the old Ottoman historians uh, uh, mention him as uh, Mehmed the Conqueror. According to historic sources, he gave order to establish new gardens uh, and park while renovating the architectural buildings of the city, as well as to it intensify the cultivation of tulips. When the Ottoman Empire reached the Golden Age in the 16th century, during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, Tulip were highly appreciated as one of the chief floral motifs in the repertoires of artists in any kind of media. And this is also one of the reasons why I want to show these two images. Uh, in one, you can see a candlestick shaped in a tulip, and the other is an Ottoman courtier holding a, a tulip in his hand, uh, uh, how elegant uh, the flower looks like. So um, I have a question for you about the, the image on the right. Um, I would never have thought that that's a tulip necessarily. Uh, so I love that you're pointing out that that is in fact a tulip. And I've noticed in much of the imagery that we've looked at so far, that the tulip 
shape is slightly different to how we've um, sort of become no become more familiar with. The the, the petals are just pointier. Um, is there a story behind that? Yes, indeed. Uh, tulips came in different varieties, and it has much to do with aesthetic understanding of the Ottomans. You see in this slide how elegantly this uh, Ottoman courtier uh, from the palace holds the tulip in his hands, uh, emphasizing the fragility of this sophisticated flower. The standards of the Turkish florist were uncomprising, and they, were, uh, they preferred only tall and thin tulips. And this is a very significant example for this kind of uh, tulips. So uh, the, uh, the aesthetic of Ottomans um, was really looking for this kind of tulips. And you're right, the petals uh, are very thin and they had to be smooth and stiff. The proportion of the petals, uh, pet uh, the exact size and the length, including the narrow pointed tips, were taken into consideration uh, when the florist evaluated the quality and the beauty of the tulips. So, um, what are some of your other favorite images um, of objects? You know, I, my interest on tulip is, uh, it is a, such an interesting pattern and it creates such a motif for entire uh, artistic creation. And you see in this slide, uh, three different variation of uh, material. And it shows also how um, flexible the artist where to use uh, similar patterns or similar motifs uh, in different medias. One is uh, uh, Ottoman kaftan, um, uh, you see the tulip shape. The other is Iznik dish uh, uh, from our collection in the Aga Khan Museum, uh, where the tulip were combined with uh, carnations uh, and elegant plants. And the other is uh, chamfron, um, which I like very much uh, uh, considering uh, the aggressive expand military expansion of Ottoman um, Empire and uh, how it was uh, threatened in Europe and uh, this elegant uh, chamfron which is protection for horse forehead elegantly depicted uh, and ornamented with tulips. I absolutely love these images. They're so beautiful and so descriptive of the tulip shape um, that I've now become more familiar with. Um, but what I really, really am curious about, uh, as someone who comes from a more of a Western art history, is how on earth does a tulip get to Europe or the West? And where does the European fascination with this flower begin? I think uh, one of the reasons, of course, uh, when they were uh, in uh, having international uh, affairs with the Ottoman court, they were affiliated with the, with the pattern of the Ottoman artists and they were uh, also learning from their repertoire. But on the other hand, through the uh, diplomatic uh, affairs, uh, m many of uh, European courts uh, have sent uh, also their ambassadors to uh, Istanbul. Um, and this gave, of course, uh, many ambassadors uh, the uh, the possibility to uh, walk around and in the city and see gardens and park and, uh, uh, and they started to understand the fascination of the Ottomans regarding this uh, flower and um, then they reported back to home and uh, one of the earliest uh, source, historic sources in this uh, context uh, we know in the uh, mid 16th century Busbeck, the ambassador of the Holy Roman Empire, uh, he was sent to Istanbul and uh, it, from 1554 uh, uh, until 1562. And uh, he uh, reported back to home and explaining that uh, he saw some flowers, they look like iris, but they are not iris. And P Ottomans love this. Uh, flowers so much and uh, this kind of uh, interesting uh, information exchange uh, brought uh, tulip into Europe. That's so interesting um, but there's something else the tulip to me is very strongly associated with the Dutch and certainly I think if you ask most people where they think the tulip comes from they'd say it's, it's a Dutch flower. Um, how come? 
the contemporary reason is uh, one uh, the Netherlands is one of the major supplier of uh, cut flowers, namely the tulip, as we know today. But in historic context, uh, uh, I want to refer back uh, to Busbeck again, and uh, when when he mentions uh, the tulip in his report back to home, he is mentioned also the tulip as a tulipa turcarum. And uh, after uh, the first tulip arrived in Europe, uh, then spread from Vienna to Antwerp, Paris, and London. And interestingly, uh, a different variation of fascination, as we saw in Ottoman art, developed in Netherlands. And I think this is also the, one of the reasons um, that we are uh, connecting tulip with Netherlands. Um, and I've got this wonderful image on the screen that you selected, um, one by Henrik Putt. Um, and I know that this has got to do with a very particular moment in history called tulip mania that occurred um, in the Netherlands. Uh, what can you tell us about tulip mania? Uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon uh, happening in uh, Dutch uh, history and art history. Uh, when the uh, first tulip, uh, tulips arrived in the Netherlands, uh, of course, we are talking about port cities first uh, through the trade. And uh, uh, they, they be, uh, because they were so exotic and uh, uh, they didn't have any knowledge about this flower, so they started to uh, create uh, fantasy stories around this flower. And uh, so we faced with uh, um, this kind of phen phenomenon, uh, the tulip, ma tulip mania or uh, tulip fever in Dutch uh, um, history. What happened is uh, people could uh, sell and buy tulip bulbs without seeing them. So they were promised to uh, come up uh, in next spring or so, but they were already part of the trading uh, um, culture in Dutch uh, society and uh, that make of course uh, some of the families uh, brought uh, some of the families in trouble because they were trading with a non-existing subject in our context tulip and dangerous speculation brought of course financial ruin for uh, families. On the other hand uh, who uh, was aware about this uh, flower and couldn't afford to buy this flower, they were interested to have at least the painting of the flower in their interiors, in their home. And um, this painting from uh, Hendrik Pot uh, shows uh, um, a very um, allegoric uh, description of uh, Tulpomania and uh, pa the painting was ex executed light, right after, after the money. <laughs> In, in Netherlands, so to speak, and you see uh, Flora, the goddess, uh, carrying bouquets of uh, uh, tulip uh, in, his, in her hands and uh, uh, guiding people to the, into the ocean. And uh, this is the, how uh, uh, artists uh, saw the, um, uh, the situation in the Netherlands and uh, of course uh, how he disqueezed uh, and uh, he, uh, he did in, in a very satiric way. I, I, I absolutely love this painting and I, um, I love that it shows the kind of the craziness of this particular moment in time. Now um, I love uh, tulips and these paintings are some of my favorite favorite paintings where we have these images of these beautiful variegated tulips and, and this one in particular which is from the great tulip book actually shows the, the price that was paid for the bulbs um, in the bottom corner. Um, and the, the funny thing is that uh, the reason that these tulips were so beautiful is because they were all infected by a disease called the tulip breaking disease, which meant that every time they came out, they came, they grew differently and looked different, uh, which was in some ways probably helped just to make the, the entire tulip craze um, what it was. Indeed, it's a very good observation, Mariana. The, the tulip could uh, change its color seemingly at will, and that, that's what people believed in, in that time. 
And interestingly, this um, a plain color, uh, colored flower, for example, a red uh, tulip uh, might emerge the following spring in a completely different uh, geese. The petals uh, feathered and flamed in intricate patterns of uh, white or deep red um, and this kind of breaks in color were caused by a virus as you mentioned which was unknown to the 17th century tulip lovers and didn't uh, become known until the late 1920s actually the most astonishing part of the story of tulip includes outrageous prices uh, for those color uh, broken tulips. It's so amazing uh, how people consider uh, the uniqueness of this disease uh, as beauty, uh, beautiful. Each uh, superbly complex uh, color pattern was originally as a fingerprint and could not be controlled, of course. Mm, that's so amazing. Um, but of course, Tulips continue on in our imagination and in many ways um, and in art history and in art and in many ways that's what, what, how the fascination continues and why we're having this discussion today. Um, and these famous 19th century uh, impressionists certainly, certainly sort of illustrate some of this. I really like um, Manet, so I'm a bit of a sucker and always want to include something by him if I have to speak about an impressionist. <laughs> um, and in this very, very simple uh, bouquet of flowers. He has tulips and roses paired together. And on the right, of course, Claude, Claude Monet, who, like anyone else who has had the opportunity to see the tulip fields in the Netherlands, couldn't resist painting the incredible colors on display. How do you see uh, the combination of your interest in the flower itself, but its appearance, uh, let's say, in contemporary art? Uh, well, I think as a, as uh, you know, from a personal perspective as an artist, I love um, botanical illustrations and that kind of close depiction of objects that become almost abstract in their depiction. Um, and, and just that close looking that occurs in, in so many different ways. But uh, in terms of the tulip, I think it has so many layers of this rich history, but also that it doesn't just permeate art, it actually ends up permeating interior design as well. Um, I, I, I love these, these images of, of chairs that have been designed and have been inspired by the tulip shape. And I know we've had a few discussions about this too. Absolutely, and I think uh, uh, looking at the Ottoman art and then how they were fascinated by the shape of a uh, tulip and created, for example, the candlestick that I show, uh, um, uh, before and then looking at in uh, in our time in contemporary and into early 20s then you see the appearance of the shape of the tulip in interior design and then that that fascinates me also because uh, it shows also the continuation of the interest of artists uh, uh, by making of uh, beautiful um, artworks and considering mother nature and including the shapes of the flowers in their concept Yes, and then, um, you know, in terms of contemporary art, I, I had a good look to try and see which other artists have the same um, interest in, uh, in tulips. And I don't think that it comes up so specifically, but there is one artist who really has made a big deal about it. Um, Jeff Koons uh, has created various versions of these, the tulips on the left. Um, he, it's in a, there are many editions of it. This one is in the Broad Museum. Uh, and on the right is uh, a, a very new installation of a public monument that's been installed in the Petit Palais in Paris in 2019, a bouquet of tulips. And it actually commemorates the victims of the 2015 Paris terror attacks. Now, love it or hate it, this is fantastic. And then you are showing the beautiful uh, image of our <laughs> museum with the tulips. Uh, please tell me about this. Well, I think um, much like you, I, I love how a tulip can be not just uh, the actual flower, but the various symbolisms that it carries with it that shifts and changes through the various centuries. Um, and in this instance, uh, we have the privilege of having this, these beautiful flowers planted um, at the museum which is in fact a gift from the Dutch embassy um, 
or the, or the Dutch consulate rather. And it also ties in with the bigger story because Canada has a relationship with tulips, uh, a very special relationship with tulips that, that dates all the way back to the Second World War. Um, the two countries really supported each other through this and um, it sort of became a symbol of peace. So when Europe was suffering under Nazi occupation, Canada provided a safe shelter for the future Dutch queen, Juliana, in 1943. And Princess Magritte was born in Ottawa. In 1945, the Dutch royal family sent 100,000 bulbs to Ottawa as a symbol of gratitude, which continued in the years after. And of course, with so many bulbs, gradually uh, Ottawa became famous for its tulips. Uh, and in 1953, the Ottawa Board of Trade decided to create a Canadian tulip festival. So I love how this is now a sign of international friendship and peace, and how fitting that it's planted at the museum that really does try to bridge cultures and uh, sort of just uh, get rid of notions of ignorance and to connect people. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and also the other connection that, you know, as a, as a museum of kind of Islamic and Muslim culture that we tie back all the way to the Ottomans. Speaking of friendship, I know you have a very special friendship uh, uh, regarding your gardening. <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well, Phyllis. So I have always aspired to have a garden full of tulips, just like the one at the museum. But instead, this has been my experience. I have not had much luck with tulips because of furry friends who visit my garden and are determined to make sure that nothing that I plant grows. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very happy at least you can see the tulips and adore them and uh, use as inspiration when you work uh, at the museum. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Phyllis, for this wonderful conversation. I really thank appreciate you for it. For your participation and for your contribution. And I wish you a good day. Thank you, and I hope everyone enjoyed listening to this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah.